Hey there, today we'll be doing this question that is 2653 sliding summary beauty which appeared in lead code weekly contest 342 and coming on to the question statement let's understand this in a simpler manner so you'll be given a num sorry a value key and x is equals to 2 now this key will tell you a window size window size means a summary of length 3 that is at every junction you have to form a summary of length 3 and you have to give them the second smallest number now this can vary obviously uh test case to test case so coming on to the brute force approach that we can apply in order to get this now in a brute force manner what can we do we can at every junction go for a length 3 sub array right here and we'll see we'll keep a temporary array which will have these elements and we'll just sort it and we'll get the second smallest element this is a naive approach and will obviously tle because the n value is 10 to the power 5 but there is also one thing to notice that how do we optimize it in order to optimize it we'll have to see this constraint now this constraint is very important nums of i ranges from minus 50 to 50 that means even if i take a subarray of length let's just say 10 to the power 3 or 4 or 5 i can have only 100 distinct elements that means i will have numbers from minus 50 to plus 50 not more than that i cannot have more than 100 elements in my whole array okay so this will actually help us and how let's just understand this for the better approach now this approach says that we'll be moving in a window size of three but with the help of a map now how will map help us so let's just take a modified array that is minus three minus three minus two let's just say and one and one so let's just say this is our array for right now now here we want to know that what is the second smallest array second smallest element and let's just take the k is equals to 3 and x is equals to 2 itself that means i want the three length summary that means the length of the summary should be 3 and x is equals to 2 and i also want the second smallest element for every summary now let's just see how do we do it in order to do this we'll be having a map as said and how will this help us let's just understand this so remember in a map everything is stored in a distinct manner so that means i will have only 100 elements in my map and I will store the frequency. So what is my first window size? That is minus three, minus three, minus three. So let's take this right here. Now here, it is pretty evident that the second smallest element will be minus three only. But how do we actually know it? That is the main problem. Because I can have more elements in my map, then how I will know that this is the element. For the second smallest, it is very easy to find. I can check the first element and what is its frequency. That is what is actually going to help us even if when we have to find the next summary that is this one or the other ones as well so at first we can definitely know this is going to be minus three which is not interesting at all so let's just move this window here and make it interesting so right now we can see we have minus three occurring two times so let's just change this to two and minus two is occurring one time so right here what is the let's just say the third smallest element that is x is equals to 3 now how are we going to know that so in order to know that what are we going to do we are going to take a count variable which is going to store the frequency that is we'll be iterating over this map and going to check that is my frequency coming closer to this now at first we'll go to minus 3 i see that this is occurring two times so i put it here but i want the third smallest element isn't it now if you see 2 is less than 3 right 2 is less than 3 that means i know that minus 3 is occurring two times only but i want the third smallest so how can this be possible now let's move on to the next part that is minus 2 so i will add 1 to it now my count is equals to 3 so right now we see that okay 3 is equals to 3 that means i have three numbers i have three numbers and i want the third smallest element and when could i get these three numbers that means the frequency when did it add up to 3 when I moved on to minus 2, right? Since map is storing everything in a sorted fashion, I can be rest assured that wherever I'm standing, if the summation of all the frequencies is greater than or equals to the value of x, I can be rest assured that yes, this is the number which is to be delivered for that index. That is the smallest number or whatever be the number, that is the number that I want to return. Now, how do we actually verify it? So let's erase this part and take another summary for here. And we'll be good to go for the code part as well. So 
with this example the previous example that we had written was not an interesting one and would not have cleared your doubts but this example will clear everything so let's just say we are to be finding for length 5 subarray and we want the third smallest element now this is the first subarray of length 5 let's just write the frequencies as well so 2 is occurring 3 times and minus 3 is occurring how many times 2 times and let's just also write it in ascending manner because that is what it will be stored in in map it will be in a ascending fashion obviously so let's just store it in that way now we have to find the third smallest number now you see here it's being confusing now how to actually do it again what do we do whenever we have a length 5 subarray that is what we were wanting i know i have made a length 5 subarray somehow and how we, are we going to make that subarray length of 5 we will see in the code part as well don't worry about that let's just understand this bit of it so length 5 subarray is made somehow the frequencies have also been calculated now how do i get the third smallest element so in order to get the third smallest element what are we going to do yes we'll just initialize the count variable again now we will go on to the first part we will see what is its frequency it's two we were wanting the third smallest element is two greater than equals to three obviously not so let's move on to the next part that is two minus two so three is its frequency the previous frequency was two so add it to it two plus three is equals to five so the current elements frequency has been updated to five that means count is five right now now you see five is greater than or equals to three now here we can actually see that yes my answer that was to be written that means two is actually the third smallest element but it gave us the answer now you must be thinking that how you just have to ensure this you understand this properly that is if you see at any given point when the frequency of the elements is greater than what you wanted to achieve will actually give you the answer why so because when a, when you were at the first element minus three you had the count to be at two which said i have some numbers or you could have some more numbers here that means let's just say minus one here which is occurring one time it can be many things right but when you are at a specific index it will tell you about that how many numbers are there previous to you including this index okay so that is why when you are at index 2 and you have the frequency to be 5 total it says that right now i have some numbers including 2 previous also previously also i have some numbers including 2 but right now it gives us the value 5 that means including previous numbers and including this minus 2 i have 5 numbers which is greater than 3 that means you can say that yes i have reached the third smallest element because 2 is comprising of more than three elements so that is how we do it code part so this code part is pretty simple it is not that confusing all we have to do is we have to declare a map after that we maintain two pointers that is i and j i will be simply in a loop and j is a pointer now what are we doing we are simply adding the elements into our map now remember one thing whenever the window size is greater that means let's just write this example right here one two three four five you want the window size to be two that means all subarrays of length two you want to find out okay so this is the first one well and good now whenever i moves here what are we doing we are maintaining a j pointer at the start so when i moves here i know that j has to move forward in order to make sure that the subarray is always of length two so that is why this is a simple two pointer approach that we apply in order to do a sliding window technique okay so whenever the index is greater that means i am having more than length the desired subarray length i will just decrease the first element or whatever j was pointing at and i'll increase j by one and this is the uh, i'll say a simpler version that is this is a simple technique that we use in sliding window so i hope you have i hope you are familiar with it and if not please do try to understand it please do try to understand this and you'll get it easily how we are doing it there are many sliding window technique videos you can refer to them as well after you have done it now when you know that yes i have a sliding window of length 3 what are we doing we are just simply going into our map as you remember now in our map what did we do we were adding the frequencies right we were just adding the frequencies let's just say the frequency of this is 5 and this is minus 10 let's just say and this is appearing 10 times obviously it is not sorted but uh, it will be sorted in the map so what were we doing we are just simply adding it into our count variable and whenever count was greater than equals to x what did we do we just simply pushed back whatever the value is that means whatever the key was we just push it into our answer uh, vector that is what we declared here at first now they have also mentioned in the question that if 
the index number that means the number which is appearing that is the second smallest or third smallest which will be given in the question is not a negative number you have to push zero so i pushed a zero, a zero here and we break out of the loop and we return answer at the end of the day now that is the whole code walkthrough here now if you have any doubt please do ask me in the comment section i'll be replying to it definitely and also if you want the code it will be in the description as well and also i've already submitted this code so not no need to worry about that